It means the place that I've had a bookstore for 37 years. And you just go there, get stuff to eat. There's kids around all the time. It's just a good atmosphere. Welcome to Camdy. We offer you good food, good people, and we've been here for 27 years. You know, it's sort of uh, the last vestige in this area of stuff that's not completely um, you know, corporate. It's special because it has that uniqueness. It's a more of a student, student town and with a lot of mom and pop shops. It's like a Kuna Matata type of zone, like a no worries type of zone. It's the small community. It's not exactly the college. It's right next to it, but yet it has that community feel of that little bit of small town you don't necessarily get from the larger Minneapolis. It's a place that's not just a generic bunch of stores, a generic bunch of houses. It's a place that matters to people and has a certain feel to it. It's home? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I live here, so it feels like home. People have history here, have uh, memories here. It's a cultural crossroads that's very unusual. And the level of uh, safety and freedom here for um, expressing, you know, who you are, what you want to do, um, and exploring is just there's not another place like it. I didn't grow up around here. I Minnesota, for my world, was the cold place that was far away. Um, uh, serendipity brought me up here because I had a friend who went to the University of Minnesota and I visited her for the very first time, very first time I've ever been up here and she lived in Dinkytown and we hung out here and went to the coffee shops and restaurants and, and I remember the name Dinkytown and thinking, oh this is a cute little college town without even conceptualizing that it was part of a huge city. I became a planner because I grew up in a town where our little downtown was dying. Like a lot of little downtowns, it was slowly creeping away. The mall was taking over. Downtown was emptying out and becoming a shell of what it was. And we watched that in front of our eyes. And didn't I didn't know what a planner was at that point, but I knew somebody had to do something. And I eventually figured out that that had a name, and that was a profession, and that's what I wanted to do with my life. We have meetings, and we will always have meetings as planning. And it's, it's an important part to have meetings. You schedule it, you set up a room, you get handouts and present presentations and you do your thing. Those usually begin at 6 o'clock. They usually have vegetables and dip and they usually have the same people coming in to the meetings. Business owners, homeowners, uh, people like that. Thank you so much again for all being here and, and thanks to the Business Association and the Varsity Theater for being such gracious hosts. I'm going to go through a presentation now that sort of outlines where we are. But there are people who are never going to come to those meetings, or if they do, there'll be a sprinkling of them, and they'll hang around a little while and leave. We need to get a good sense of the voice out there, because there's a lot of voices. There's not one opinion. Even at our public meeting, we asked people, what do you, what's, what's important? And we had a big spectrum, and from agree to disagree. The dots are all at agree and disagree. There's hardly any neutral. We have strong opinions, we have different opinions, we have different voices, and we need to actually go out and almost, I don't want to say grab, but engage with the folks who are just passing through because they're part of this too. The problem that people are having is they're rezoning a certain block, and that block that's being rezoned was parking lots, and then it's also going to raise rents for the surrounding businesses because they're increasing the density of the area. From what I understand, it's gonna be a bunch of condos going in, bringing in more students to live here. And in theory, it's a good idea because it'll kind of bring in a lot more people with a lot more money. But at the same time, it kind of worries me a little bit because it's gonna drive up the prices of everything. It's mainly about a respecting of a tradition. Getting rid of Dinky Town is like getting rid of downtown. I have a lot of um, concern about adding that much new retail. I don't see how that is going to accommodate the continued viability and vitality of the small business community here. I think it's just critical for Dinky Town to remain a neighborhood business district and not be overtaken by housing. I think it's getting a little bit over commercialized. You're losing a lot of the small businesses and I was really sad when I saw House of Hanson was gone. It was always kind of a nice little family place. And one of the things that drew me to Dinky Town especially was um, Al's Breakfast and how they're open till one every single day and no matter what time it is, if you are in line after one o'clock they're gonna serve you no matter what. Last time I was there I ran into people from Iowa who just came up to eat at Al's Breakfast. If this zoning project takes over that whole um, block of places right over here, if that goes away, a lot of people are going to be upset about that one. The hope is that, uh, you know, large corporations probably probably don't want them to come in if they raise prices, if they make things inconvenient. I just hope that somebody with deep pockets don't just come in here and buy Dinky Town to the point where they 
like it sells its quality. Dinky Town's quality is not for sale. I don't really like all the construction traffic either. I'm a delivery driver here as well, and that makes my job much more difficult. The book house was at the top of its game um, when we were told to disassemble and move. Um, some people think that the used book business is just a vestige, and it's not. It's a completely active set of decisions that make it continue to be viable. I kept this barbershop named Milo because Milo was the oldest barber in Dinkytown. And I'm the youngest, newest barber, so I always wanted to respect it, and that's why I always believe that I have good luck because of the tradition of Dinkytown. It's good and it's bad because uh, bad is for obviously for smaller businesses, so they might not have a chance to come back, or uh, it depends on uh, how the development's gonna be. It's a place that a lot of people care about, and it's really sort of at the crux of a, a lot of con trends converging. We're seeing people wanting to live near campus more than in the past. The U has always been traditionally a commuter school. It's becoming a place where people want to be. People are paying attention and wondering what's next. A lot of, a lot of strong opinions, a lot of different opinions. It's why the city's decided we really need to do some planning because this is one of those areas of the city that's not just like everywhere else, that one size fits all policy doesn't work. So we're doing a planning and we're working with artists because we can use some creative perspectives. We're looking at the uh, different areas that are going to be redeveloped, rezoned, so we're uh, trying to get input into those different things. What our approach is doing is instead of having people come to a meeting, we, we go to where people are and ask the same questions and um, try to get uh, more people that have not traditionally been involved. I think Dinky Town is a place that belongs to everyone. Planning is about not just listening to the democracy of the world, but, but incorporating that in a larger process and a framework. So one thing that we really need to do in this area is get out and take the initiative and talk to people who are on the streets and flowing through there. Dinky Town's a wonderful place to do that because no matter when you go, there's people out and about circulating. From the planning perspective, we absolutely need to hear what all those voices are. We're working closely with Hyla Mays and to give her all the feedback and then watch it go forward and hopefully impact the small area plan. That is our largest ambition. What we're doing to get people heard is we're actually biking around campus with this uh, cart contraption. We're just stopping, talking to people, uh, educating them about the history of Dinky Town. A lot of people know Dinky Town as it is now, but they don't know the history of Dinky Town and how it developed and the fact that it's a historic area. So we've just been really trying to get the voice of people that really have a connection, a strong relationship to Dinky Town, to ask them about their ideas of change. We meet you directly, we meet you where you're at, and then we inform you on the spot and then ask your opinion. So um, I think it's like getting people excited, it's getting fresh ideas out there. It's the 21st century and we need new models for the 21st century. I believe artists and designers are equipped to enhance or develop some of these new approaches. This just kicks it up to a whole different level. We're bringing people whose professional job it is to absolutely never be inside the box. Oh, it's a terrific idea. We, having the experience with Save Dinky Town, it was amazing how hard it was to get people informed about what was going on. Yes, teamwork is good. I think it's, uh, well, we build more strength on the sense of uh, collaboration. It's good to have different voices, different opinions. And it's really nice to kind of get some people around who are more informed to tell everybody exactly, okay, here's what's good about it, here's what's gonna happen, here's what might be the downside. The side I'm on is making sure that everybody is heard. It's about making sure that our processes, our planning processes, represent the city we live in. I think it's good to preserve Dinky Town to a certain degree. I think every place needs needs to change and needs to evolve and needs to develop, but it, it has to be at a logical, respectable pace. We have to keep moving, we have to keep investing, we have to keep growing or we fall backwards. You don't want to just keep things the way that they've been for the past 50 years. Uh, you can keep some of those elements, but I think it needs to logically evolve. It's a place where people learn how to grow up, a place in people's lives where they are emerging into adulthood and becoming an independent. I've always thought that Dinky Town is a really great place to grow old and odd in. This environment is a different environment than the whole world. I wouldn't say it's hippie, but it's, it's a little bit alternative and it's, it's offer a sense of community. This is a creative city, a lot of artists and artistic people and creative thinkers um, bringing those sensibilities to the table in terms of how we're playing the future of our city is really important. This is helping us show how we can do this and how it can be successful and how we work together and how we can change the product and um, change the world a little bit as a result.